We're at the picnic bench looking to the north across the dam site. And you can see that the dam's got a rock face to it where you drop from the main Los Viqueros watershed into the Kellogg part of the watershed. And we're looking out to Brentwood and the Central Valley. It's hazy today, but just a couple of days ago I was out in East County and had 200 miles of the Sierra visible shining across the valley. And so you can see that, especially on clear winter days. Contra Costa Water District serves more than half a million residents with water from the Sacramento-San Joaquin River Delta. In the wet season, it pumps high-quality Delta water into the reservoir to be used later in the year when Delta water tends to get salty. Work on a 100,000-acre-foot dam and reservoir was completed in 1998. An enlargement big enough for 160,000 acre-feet was completed in 2012. That's a small ocean of water, more than 52 billion gallons. Federal and state water projects have eyed the Los Vaqueros site for years. In fact, they proposed a million acre foot storage site here as part of a package called the Peripheral Canal. When that was rejected at the ballot box in 1982, the Contra Costa Water District decided to go it alone. The bond issue funding it passed by a two-to-one margin in 1988. But that didn't stop people from wondering whether it could ever be built. After all, no new Delta water project had been approved for more than a decade, and the plan for Los Vaqueros was frightfully complex. It involved buying 20,000 acres of land, some of which the county had just approved for a housing development. It involved convincing two federal agencies that the project wouldn't harm populations of salmon and Delta smelt. It involved convincing other Delta water users that their interests would be protected too. It involved building a dam, a reservoir, and dozens of miles of pipeline. And finally, it involved setting up recreational facilities and taking on the unending task of managing a watershed that was 10 times as big as the reservoir itself. Success not only meant that Contra Costa Water District was becoming better at delivering high-quality water, it was becoming a full-fledged park agency as well. All in all, the process took a decade, seven years in the planning and permitting phase, and three years in construction. Back in the 1980s, when the district first proposed this project, Seth Adams and some friends set up a nonprofit called the California Water Policy Group to oppose the dam and reservoir. Adams loved the wild isolation of this place, the huge swaths of grassland and the scruffy old valley oaks, and he didn't want to drown them with the reservoir. But today, he seems happy with the consolation prize. Losing the bottom of the valley was bittersweet, but gaining a new 20,000 acre park was a quite positive thing as well. The reservoir expansion approved in 2004 involved flooding 600 acres of additional land. To compensate, the district ended up purchasing and protecting 6,000 acres of land elsewhere, 5,000 for mitigation for the expansion, and 1,000 for mitigation of their own or someone else's future project. That means almost 10 times more land was protected than was lost, saving some vital space for kit foxes, eagles, and other reminders of California's old abundance. From here, continue along the Peninsula Crest Trail. At times, you'll be walking at the same level as the tops of the trees, so you may see some wildlife. One March, we counted four Lewis's woodpeckers, one acorn woodpecker, one Nuttles woodpecker, and a pygmy nuthatch. In about three quarters of a mile, that's 15 minutes or so, you'll see a sign on your left that points to the Peninsula Crest Lookout. There you'll discover another picnic table and the highest point on our hike. <laughs>